Hey everyone, welcome to Lunch Investing. Today we will be looking at the most known Turkish stock, thanks to Monish Babrai, which is Reisal Logistics. In 2019, Monish Babrai's funds started buying the stock and eventually bought one third of the company for only $7 million. Today, the company is trading around $300 million market cap, so he is up almost 14 times on his money, while the US dollar against the Turkish lira more than tripled at the same time period. But Monish still sees an outstanding opportunity in Reisash. I took some parts from one of his videos where he talks about Reisash and I actually cut it a little bit, but I will leave a link to the whole video in the description as well. Now, let's watch it. And I remember we were driving to a business he was taking me to, where he said, Monish, uh, the market cap is $20 million and the liquidation value is like $800 million. So I said, fraud, heck yeah. <laughs> In my, in English, I told Haider, Haider, is this a fraud? He said, no, I have an investment in it, as far as I can tell. So basically, he said, there's no fraud. And he said, it's really simple. They have 12 million square feet of warehouses. They're 99% leased. You can very easily get a value on those. It's about $80 a square foot on average. So you have about a billion dollar value of these warehouses. And there's 200 million of debt. And there's 800 million. And these are all leased to Amazon, Ikea, Carrefour. 99% leased, inflation index leases or dollar leases. And there's nothing there. So I went and the father and son that run the business, I met them, I liked them. I thought they were really smart business people. And then I spent the afternoon visiting the warehouses and they looked great. And I really couldn't find anything wrong with the company. And I started buying the stock. So I started buying the shares and I was surprised for $7 million, I got one third of the company. And the founding family, actually, they were not very savvy on the stock market. I think they are now. They had about 35, 36%. So my stake is almost at the level of their stake. Now they've increased their stake. They're like 42 or 43%. And the second thing, what I notice about this father son that run this business is that they didn't just have the warehouse business. They also have the largest freight train network in Turkey. So in Turkey, the rail cars are private and uh, you can run freight business and so on. They have the largest truck fleet in Turkey. They have 2000 trucks. They have a huge forklift rental business. They have a vehicle inspection business. Every car has to go through inspections every two years. And that's like you get sanctioned by the government and so on. So they're like four or five businesses. Each one has very favorable economics and each one is a high quality business. And so their model is that if they don't get their money back in two to three years in dollars, they have no interest in investing. So I found that unlike a lot of entrepreneurs and business managers, the father never went to college, but he just understands that if I put a dollar out, he wants to know your dollar kitni de And if it's not coming back in three years, he's not interested. So he doesn't understand IRR, he doesn't understand return on equity, he doesn't understand any of those terms. He just understands this particular fact, which your grandfather understood. Yeah. You know, he just understood the fact that I put money out and what comes back and that's what matters. So when we invested in 2019, the company was worth about seven, 800 million. At least it was probably worth more, but that's the amount I could figure out. I think the value now, maybe about a billion and a half, it could be more. And the, the stock that was a 20 million market cap is now like 350, 400 million. So it's moved, you know, this is in dollars. The Lira has collapsed in the meanwhile. Right. And even with the collapse of Lira in dollars, we are up a lot. But even at the 350, 400 million, it's very undervalued. And the thing is that Abhi, wo kehte na, hing lage, hing lage na rang chauka. So basically, what do I have to do? Yeah. I have to be in Austin just reading whatever I want to read. Okay. Do I have control? No. Do mm -hmm. I care about control? No. Do I want to be on the board? No. All those things mean I have to do work. My job is to just cheer them on. I go meet them once a year. I talk to them every few months and they are very smart about how they, invest. I've never seen them make a, they're very creative. What I was telling you guys about the creativity, they have extreme creative creativity of entering new businesses but they make it extremely tiny bets. So they'll see some opportunity. They'll actually go in where they don't have competence, put 
half a million, one million dollars, whatever, and they see what happens. If it works, then they just press on the accelerator and they go. And if it doesn't work, they back off and then try something else. So basically, Abhi, with this business, if it went to a billion dollar market cap today, we're not selling. If it's going to five billion, we're not selling. Because basically, if someone is reinvesting capital 25, 35% return, and this father son do all pretty smart about doing it, I basically, I need to leave them alone for 20 years. So what difference does it make whether I'm the founder of the business or the manager of the business or a passive investor? The best position is a passive investor. Right? And your grandfather worked very hard. Your uncles worked very hard. Everyone worked very hard. I just not that hard working, you know? <laughs> so I think that, I think that there are because of the auction driven nature of markets, Something like this Resas in Turkey will show up once in a lifetime, but you only need one, you don't need 10. But there are plenty of them that show up, which will give you a 10X, give you a 20X. Resas might give us three, 400. Eventually, by the time we're done, it might be several hundred times the return. And all we got to do is be a cheerleader, nothing else. And uh, life is good. So I went ahead and decided to fact check the real estate portfolio to give it a rough estimate value. So the first thing is, Resas Rosistic doesn't own the real estate. It is another publicly traded company that is called Resash GAO. GAO is basically a Turkish version of a REIT. But 61.94% of that company is owned by Resash Logistic. Now they released their real estate portfolio and David Park, I will leave a link to his Twitter in the description, took it to Google Sheets. I will leave the original link in the description as well. Now in this portfolio, I did check some random examples and I will show one of those here. The example is Izmir Menderes Görece Warehouse. It has 8,118 square meters plot. Now this is from Saibindan.com, which could be called as Turkey Stilov. I checked some other listings as well, and these numbers seem to be the average. In here, we can see that this empty plot square meter price is 7,285 Turkish liras. And I did some fourth grade math. Research's examples plot at these prices should be 59 million lira. By the way, if you like this video so far, please leave a like and subscribe. All right. I actually went ahead and tried to determine what is the plot cost of the entire warehouse. So if I wanted to build a new warehouse, what percentage of my cost would be the plot? My first findings indicated around 40 to 50 percent, but let me remind you that Reisach's warehouses are the top-notch warehouses. They are renting them to international firms like Amazon, Carrefour, Ikea and so forth. And they recently have built solar panels on top of most of their warehouses. So my honest guess would be that plot cost is closer to 20% for Reisach's warehouses. But to have further margin of safety built in, with some guidance from ChatGPT as well, I decided to use 40% as the plot cost. So with these numbers that I believe to be incredibly conservative, that example's true value seems to be 82% higher than it is on paper. And I checked some others in Reisash's portfolio and mostly got similar results. So the liquidation value inclusive of debt on paper is $651 million. Adding 82% premium to that is $1.18 million. Now Reisash Logistic owns 61.94% of debt which is closer to almost $750 million. That means that at the very least, $750 million Reisash GAO stake. Probably more for Reisash Logistic. Monish says that approximately the liquidation value is currently closer to $1.5 billion. So that means in my calculation, that leaves another $750 million for car inspection, freight train, truck fleet, distribution of tobacco products, and forklift rental business. But Monish probably values the real estate portfolio much higher, in my opinion. So the business is still close to $300 million market cap and $1.5 billion liquidation value. But that's not even the best part. According to Monish, if the management of Reisash can't see they will be making their investment back in two to three years on a dollar basis, they are not investing. So they are basically looking for around 30% annual returns, which is simply absurd when you look at it with a Western view. But first of all, the market cap of the business is still very small around $300 million. So in their possible world to invest in, opportunities are huge. And secondly, Turkish economy or any other developing economies are not as efficient as the developed one. So they can actually find those inefficiencies much more easily compared to the Western world. On the flip side, there are other risks that come with it, such as higher fraud and regulation risks and so forth. The way that they aim to get these high returns 
is the same as Amazon, according to Monish, which is throwing lots of things at the wall and seeing what sticks. Monish says that Resage is investing in a lot of things as well, but in a small amount. And when they see they are getting good returns, they are investing heavily in that area. Finally, in another video, Monish said that he can easily see Resage at $10 billion market cap in 2040. So from the current $300 million market cap, their CAGR until 2040 would be 22.91%, which is more than double the market averages. I am currently trying to make Resage my biggest holding, so please be aware that I am a shareholder as well and do your own research. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.